I thought it was our utility company's helmet. So I threw it in my car, figured when things calmed down, I'd take it back to Lower Valley. I did that. My friend George from Lower Valley looked at me and said, you know, Kathy, that's the driver's helmet. And already I started the wheels turning for this presentation at that point, and I had a moment of decision. And you know, I thought, this is gonna be a great thing to put on and tell the driver's story with. Because a driver has a remarkable story that is a lesson for all of you, for everything that we do. There he was on the opposite side of the tank that day, looking at his gauges. And he starts to hear, pop, 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 pop. And he looks down underneath the tank and he sees a giant gas pump. What do we do? When we get into an emergent situation, we go right back to our training, folks. We go back to our training because we are so scared that we can't think through the checklists and the processes that we've learned in our training. We go to that training because we've muscle memory practice it. So we're ready to respond when the time happens. And he did, he did well. He ran underneath the truck. He shut off the emergency switch for that underground tank. Unfortunately, all I did was keep the tank from doing anything, which wasn't good anyway, because the leak was on this side of the tank. He didn't know that. He shut off the emergency switch. He runs over to the Amerigas office and tells Jessica, shut down the power, get out. She climbed an eight foot chain link fence by herself to get away from the gas pump. He runs into the exercise building where they're exercising, right? Now imagine this. He's telling them to shut down and evacuate. You're on an exercise machine. We got mirrors on one side and windows on the other. Both of your doors have a gas plow behind them. He's telling them to run to the south where there's a window that they break in the process of running to the south of this building, trying to get out of it. The whole place ignites outside, of course. So now they've got fire coming through, they can see in the window, they got fire reflecting in the mirrors, and they're running south. When they break the window, they're getting wet because a sprinkler had deployed. A sprinkler had deployed from the heat from this explosion. They all got out safe. The driver and Jessica get swooped up by our ambulance crew, and here's another lesson for you to take home. Get your ambulance crew to make sure your patients are okay, both of them are okay, Get them settled down and get a report of what just happened. Got a bad connection. Get a report of what just happened. Our driver was able to give that report, and my guy in my right hand seat was able to get a site plan for the incident commander to be able to figure out what was going on. I parked and shielded myself from all the flames and stuff that was going on. You should have heard the noise, it was crazy. And Mike jumped out of the car and started giving me stuff, okay? That's such an important thing. So our driver gets out, he's in the ambulance, my crew has interviewed him. Actually, we don't know where he is today. Um, I hope he's doing well. I hope he doesn't have any critical incident debriefing episodes and issues that he needs to take care of. But it was quite an event. He did the right things. He did what his training told him to do. Train, 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 so that you can respond and you can make the right decisions when that day comes.